We're at stop five and there are two different kinds of rocks here. Take a look at what this scene looks like. You can see we have the red beds below here and you can see the, the layering in it. They're tilted like this. And then there's a dark rock that doesn't have any layers. Has some crystals and other things in it. It's kind of a spotted look from a distance. This is a sandstone mostly down here and this is a volcanic rock. We typically call it an andesite. It's homogeneous. A lot of times igneous rocks don't have a lot of layering because there's one eruption, the material comes out and is, de and is deposited, accumulates, and it's all one event. The nature of the contact in here is something that we always look at. And what you can see is this is a very tight contact. There's no rubble or anything along it. And so it's clearly not a fault because if it was a fault, there would be broken rocks along it. Instead, what it looks like is it looks like this rock just came over the top and as a, as a magma, as a lava flow, and just was deposited straight on top of this. If you look here along the edge, you can see there's a little reddish zone in the sandstones. And that's probably because this rock had a lot of heat, it was like a thousand degrees centigrade, and baked the rocks underneath it. So the combination of it being a sharp contact and the baking in here and that it's not a fault tells you that this is just a, a contact where the lava flow came on top of the sandstones. It's a little hard to see from your angle, but it looks like this boundary between the andesite and the red beds is also tilted. And so when, if you drew a cross section in here, you would want to show that these units are actually tilted. Be sure you mark this contact on your map at stop five with andesite uphill and to the southwest and the red beds downhill and to the north and northeast. This boundary between these two rocks, this contact, is the same one we looked at at stop one. And so if you were trying to do a geologic map of this hill, you would take this contact and extrapolate it over the hill and down the hill to stop one. One of the things in here is that although this is lava flow here and red beds here, this isn't the end of anything. This, this lava flow probably was off in the air and the red beds were off in the air and this contact you would extend up in the air and it's just been eroded back. So it's not like it's the end of the lava flow or anything. It is simply just an exposure of the contact that was once more extensive and has been eroded back down. And with more time, this will erode farther back down and it will look about the same, but it will be farther back into the hill as this hillside gets eroded. Up in the andesite, there are some fragments that look like they're probably some of the red beds and that is consistent with th this being the younger rock which contains pieces of the older rock.